we are going to prove today that Christianity is man worship. You heard that right. Man worship. Now I'm going to show you from the scriptures. You say you believe in the Bible. We're going to see. I'm going to show you that Christianity is nothing but man worship. Now let's start with the words coming from Jesus own mouth. Now he says this in John 8 40. But now you seek to kill me. Amen. Can I hear an amen, church? Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. They have told you the truth. Oh, can I get another amen? amen? So he's telling you that he's a man, and he's telling you that he's telling the truth. That's all I need right there. Now let's go to another confirmation, because I don't like doing the island scriptures. I love everything being established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Now my first witness was John. And this was coming from Jesus' own mouth. Now let's go to Acts 2.22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man. Oh, can I get another amen, church? Amen. So here we have John recording Jesus calling himself a man. And then Peter, an eyewitness of the so-called gospels of Jesus. This man calls Jesus a man. Now I told you Christianity is man worship. That's all I need right there. Jesus a man. Let me give you some more. Because a lot of you think that Jesus did his miracles from his own power. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God. So he was approved of God. Among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves know. So Peter not only called Jesus a man, he knew Jesus was a man. He snatched Jesus up and told him that he was not going to suffer. Peter knew that Jesus was a man. That's why he denied him three times. He knew he was a man, and he recognized that the power that he had, he didn't do in his own self. Peter recognized that the power Jesus had came from God Almighty. That is the perfect balance. And Jesus said this with his own mouth. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. So there's two witnesses. We have John. Then we have Peter. Now let's keep going. Because a lot of you believe that when Jesus said, I and my father is one, that meant he was God and that meant he was equal with God. Now, that can't be true because Jesus said, my father is greater than I. And he's not even talking about God Almighty. He's talking about Paul. But either way it goes, he can't be equal if the father is greater. Now, let's get John 10, 33. The Jews answered him. Saying, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said you are gods. So when they called him a man, he didn't defend himself. Okay? All he did was say, look, you guys are gods too. I'm just the little God. I'm just the son of God. If the father is the God, then the son is the God. But guess who's greater? The father is greater than a son. And so Jesus recognized that God called us all gods. And so Jesus said that he was the son of God. Now going on. Verse 36. Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemous, because I said I am the Son of God. Now that's a whole lot of Greek words for you. All he basically said is, look, you guys are gods. Is it a big deal that I am the Son of God? Now let's go to John 5, 18. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him. Because he not only had broken the Sabbath, 
but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. So when we go to John 8, 27, it reads, they understood not that he spake to them of the father. What father are you talking about? Because they already acknowledged that he made God his father. So when the scriptures say they understood not that he spake to them of the father, he's not talking about the father God. He's talking about the father in 1 Corinthians 4.15. And that is your boy Paul. Paul is the father of the Christian church and Jesus is the son of the Christian church. Jesus was not the only person that was worshipped because I know a lot of Christians want to take me there. They want to say, well, Jesus was worshipped. He was the only man that received worship. That's a lie. Now let's go to 1 Chronicles 29 and 20. And David said to all the congregation, Now bless the Lord your God. And all the congregation blessed the Lord God of their fathers and bowed down their heads. And they worshipped the Lord and the King David. So the people worshipped God and they worshipped David. David received worship. Jesus received worship. And guess who else received worship? All the kings of Israel, the prophets, the priests, the men of Israel were into this worship. This is seen in Jeremiah 8 and 1. And let's see how God feels about man worship. Because you Christians are man worshipers. Okay? You ain't doing nothing but committing idolatry. And I'm going to take it all the way home, okay? I'm going to hit you with the grand finale last, okay? You are a man worshiper. Deal with it. In Jeremiah 8 and 1, it reads, At that time, saith the Lord, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah, and the bones of his princes, and the bones of the priests, and the bones of the prophets, and the bones of the inhabitants of of Jerusalem out of their graves. So he's speaking about the kings of Judah, the princes, the priests, the prophets, and the people. Verse 2, and they shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven, whom they have loved and of whom they have served and after whom they have walked and of whom they have sought and of whom they have worshipped. So the children of Israel all worship the above people I listed. That is the kings, that is the prophets, that is the priest, and that is the people. The children of Israel were worshiping one another, okay? You can't get away from this, okay? It's in your Bible. Going back up to verse 2. And of whom they have worshipped, they shall not be gathered nor be buried. They shall be for dung. Dung is poop. They shall be for dung upon the face of the earth. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family. The children of Israel was wicked. They was worshiping one another. Okay? And this all started when the children of Israel asked for a king. It was a wicked thing for the children of Israel to ask for a king. Many of you have no idea what you're saying when you're saying Christ is king and Christ is king. You have no idea that when the children of Israel ask for a king, they rejected the most high because God was king. And what happened was the children of Israel were judged and God promised that he would consume both the people of Israel and and the king if they disobeyed his commandment. Now look what happened. The children of Israel were consumed. And the prophet Esau will have to die at the last day. Okay? The whole nation of Israel screwed up when they asked for a king. Because when they did that, they rejected God. So here we just learned today. That Jesus was not the only person that was worshipped. Jesus was not the only person who did miracles. Jesus is not the only person who raised the dead. There was a man by the name of Elijah who did all these things first. Okay? And to put the cherry on top, this man went into heaven alive. Now, I got more for you. The church is worshipping their brother. According to the Bible, Jesus is your brother. So how is your brother God 
Let's get that. Hebrews 2, 11 and 12. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. See, that's what he meant when he said me and my father is one. He's basically saying me and the father of the Christian church is all one. And then in John 17, Jesus prayed that you all would be one in Christianity. So according to the Bible, Jesus is saying, he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Verse 12, saying, I will declare your name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. So how is Jesus God if he's singing praises to God and if Jesus is your brother according to the Bible? Y'all lost and y'all confused. Y'all know what y'all doing? Y'all worshiping the man. You know why? 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 Because you a man worshiper. You a man worshiper. Whatever the white man say, you worship that. Whatever his laws say, you go with that. You are a man worshiper. Christianity gave birth to man worship. Okay? The nation of Israel dealt with this and they passed it along to the Christians. According to the Quran, Jesus was questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did you say to the people, worship you and your mother as gods? Okay. And he was corrected. Jesus denied ever receiving any worship. You see, the thing about the Bible in the Quran, Jesus, peace be upon him. Okay. He can get away with whatever he wants. In the Bible, okay, they make it seem that way, and that's because a lie was forged upon him. But in the Bible, he can get away with whatever he wants. But in the Quran, oh, we have restrained the sons, okay? The sons are in check in the Quran, okay? Jesus is restrained. All of us are restrained. Only Allah is exalted in the Quran, and that's the way it's supposed to be. This was the problem of Eli. Eli was in trouble with God because he was putting his sons above God. So you know what God did? God killed both of his sons, okay? And the ark of God was snatched. And then when Eli heard about it, he fell back and broke his neck. That's how God feels about man worship. That's how God feels about son worship going on. Now let's finish off the grand finale. Let's go to Hebrews 3 and 1. You know why? Because the Bible says that Jesus is an apostle. This is going to be Hebrews 3 and 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. So how is God going to be a messenger? God is the one who sends spokesmen on his behalf. He sends ambassadors. He sends messengers. Just like the Christians want to say that Jesus is the great I am that I am. Well, the great I am that I am sends prophets. He's not a prophet. God Almighty is exalted above all those things. God is not an apostle. God is not a prophet. God is a God in Islam. He sends prophets. He sends messengers. And that's why we honor the prophet in Islam. Because we have the perfect balance. Our God in the nation of Islam is not a prophet. Okay? But in the Bible, your God is a prophet. Your God is an apostle. Your God is a messenger. Why? Because you are worshiping your brother. Christians are man worshipers. Now, I just took it home and I didn't take much of your time. Your job is to share this channel. Your job is to get this truth out there. There's too much truth on this channel. We are on the verge of a revolution, okay? We are on the verge of breaking down Babylon's image, okay? And that is the idolatrous religion we call Christianity. It is father and son worship. It is the curse of Canaan. It is the curse of rebuilding Jericho. It is the two golden calves. Christianity is all these things. It is the most wicked religion on the planet. planet, planet, planet Their God has planet, brothers. Planet, planet, their God has sisters. How could God have brothers and sisters? This right here, man, makes no sense. And we see in Jeremiah, God judged the nation of Israel for worshiping one another. The nation of Israel gave us that religion of ball worship, 
of worshiping man instead of God. Now, God said in Numbers 23, 19, and we're going to take it home. Christians ignore Moses to follow their perception of John. Right here in the book of Numbers 23 and 19, it reads, God is not a man. Verbatim. Exactly. Word for word. You know these Christians in the comments talking about Jesus is God. That's not in the Bible verbatim. They making that up. Okay. The Bible says verbatim. And a lot of Christians don't know what verbatim mean. It's a shame. God is not a man that he should lie. Guess what else he ain't? Neither the son of man. Now Jesus was called the son of man more than 93 times in the entire New Testament. Okay, this man is called a man from his own mouth, from his eyewitness, Peter. Everybody knew that Jesus was a man. And here we have in Numbers 23, 19, and it says it four times. If you really look at the book of Hosea, if you look at the book of Judah, if you look at Samuel, it says it four times. God is not a man. God is not the son of man. Wake up. Wake up. Stop worshiping man. Stop being a man worshiper. Stop worshiping your brother. Jesus is your brother. Worship God with no partners, okay? The Christians are guilty of worshiping their brothers, and I'm going to give you that scripture one more time. This is going to be Hebrews 2 and 11. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause? He is not ashamed to call them brother. The Bible says Jesus is your brother. Okay. How is God your brother? How are you worshiping your brother? You know what? You a man worshiper. Repent. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.